Thank you, Dr. Arup. So good morning, all of you. And today, it's one of the very important symposium on diabetic retinopathy. And I'll try to cover something about type 2 diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, diabetes epidemic in India. I'll try to cover my talk by talking about the type 2 diabetes global and Indian scenario, something about our own diabetic retinopathy epidemiology study, the SN DREAM study, how the Asian and global diabetic retinopathy is different, and various initiatives which have been taken in our country. So talking about global scenario, the International Diabetes Federation, they did tell us that the number of people who have diabetes in 2014 are 387 million globally. And by 2035, they expect nearly about 200 million more people joining to it. So nearly an increase by about 53%. And they concluded it is diabetes is a huge and growing problem. The problem is nearly about 50%, nearly 46.3% of this 387 million don't know that they have diabetes. So one in two diabetic doesn't know that he has a disease. So that's an important problem. <clears throat> this is the list they come out with, the 10 countries, the top 10 countries, um, as far as diabetes is concerned, by number of people having diabetes. And just you take China, India, and US, combine all of three, nearly about half of the people live here who have diabetes. So definitely diabetes is a problem, and India is one of the important places where diabetes problem is increasing. Now coming about the Indian scenario, just in three decades, these are the various studies. There are just four major epidemiological studies on diabetes. And in three decades, the prevalence of diabetes has increased from 2% to nearly about 5% in the smaller towns. And if you look at 2011, it's about 13%. And in rural area also, from 2%, it has increased to 7%. So definitely, over a period of time, the prevalence of diabetes has increased. This is one of the first national study on diabetes, because all these studies which I had shown were all in various geographic locations. So ICMR took a very important step trying to find out the prevalence of diabetes and pre-diabetes in various parts of the country. And they not only gave the prevalence of diabetes, but also defined the, the, the prevalence of pre-diabetes in our country. So this study was done in three states and one union territory. And what they found everywhere, <clears throat> the prevalence is different. So there is regional differences in prevalence of diabetes. And these regional differences, if you look at the differences in diabetes, is much more. There is a rural-urban divide, more in the urban area as compared to rural area. But this divide seems to be less when we talk about pre-diabetes. So meaning that these are the people who will develop diabetes later. So we are seeing a real epidemic coming when we get all these pre-diabetes converted to many of them converted to diabetes. Next couple of years, when we again talk about the same slide, we'll have there is no urban-rural divide. <clears throat> this is again the first population-based study on incidence of diabetes. Like those who didn't have diabetes, how many of them developed diabetes later on? So this was the first study on the incidence of diabetes. And this was a 10-year incidence. So people who didn't have diabetes at the baseline 19% of them, those who had a normal glucose tolerance, about 20% developed diabetes after 10 years. And about 25%, so overall, nearly 45% of people who were not having anything 10 years later, they either have, were pre-diabetic or they were diabetic. And those who already had pre-diabetic, a very uh, no, big number, nearly about 59, 60% of them in 10 years converted to diabetes. So definitely, if you talk up the numbers of diabetes and the pre-diabetes, it is an important problem in India. This is a term, because the talk was on epidemics, so there is a term which is called as diabetes epidemicity index. 
which is actually calculated by this formula and this gives the magnitude of what is the epidemic of diabetes in a particular region. So in India, the epidemicity index is nearly three times from US. So definitely, though if you look at the prevalence of diabetes today, it seems to be same, but it is going towards epidemic in India. So the epidemic of type 2 diabetes is global. It is local also and global, not just global. It is there everywhere and definitely India is one important place. Now talking something about the epidemiological study, so we did three studies. First was an urban prevalence study. A four-year incidence like those who didn't have retinopathy, how many developed at, at four years. And a rural prevalence study. And this study came out with nearly about 64 reports in peer-reviewed journals. So this has given good insight about the problem of diabetic retinopathy in India. The initial study, the SN Dream 1, which was in urban area, was a cross-sectional study, people more than 40 years, 6,000 people in Chennai. And what we found that if you are in Chennai more than 40 years, nearly one out of three will have diabetes, one out of two. Uh, no, no, sorry, 10. Out of 10 people, if you see, you will have three people having diabetes and nearly two of them will have diabetic retinopathy. So it's really a big problem in urban areas. And duration of diabetes was a single important factor contributing to a impo as an important risk factor for diabetic retinopathy. There was a belief when we started the study that diabetes seems to be a problem of upper and middle socioeconomic group. And we also found the same thing, higher socioeconomic group had more diabetes. But what we found that once you have diabetes, there is no difference whether it's a low, middle or high, the chances of retinopathy is same. So that is something, so for diabetes, it does follow, but once they have diabetes, it doesn't see the socioeconomic status whether you develop diabetic retinopathy. Another factor which we were keen to look at is obesity because in our clinics we do see many people who are thin, lean, diabetic. In Western literature, obesity is an important risk factor. So we looked into the various types of obesity and the influence on diabetic retinopathy and we did find that there can be a generalized or isolated abdominal or a combined obesity. Combined obesity seem to be more uh, in women. And this group, the isolated abdominal obesity, was important risk factor for both diabetic retinopathy and sight-threatening diabetic retinopathy and as compared to the other subgroups. We also tried looking at the, the metabolic control in terms of glycemic control, the blood pressure, and the, the uh, low-density lipoprotein. Wanted to know how many of our patients have a good control or optimal control and what is the role of suboptimal control of these factors in diabetic retinopathy. So it's only one-third of the patient had optimal control. These are the patients who are all diabetics. They are in a regular care of a physician, but still only one-third of them had a optimal control of these factors. And the worst combination seems to be both glycemic and BP control together. This is one, and the, all three uncontrolled was the second important risk factor for diabetic retinopathy. We also did molecular genetic study in the first uh, phase of the project where we tried looking at some of the known uh, mechanisms which were there and by that we looked into candidate genes and we came out with about 13 publications and we found six of these risk factors and two were protective alleles for diabetic retinopathy. We also studied what is the gene-gene interaction and gene-environmental interaction and we did find some interesting findings as far as genetic studies were concerned. In the second phase of the study, we did a genome-wide association study. The difference between these two is that in the candidate gene, you already know there is a pathway and you try looking at, like you know, VEGF has a role, so we tried looking at VEGF polymorphisms. Here we look at the whole genome, all the genes which are responsible for the retinal proteins, and then find out are there any novel genes which are responsible for retinopathy. So we did find about 35 uh, of the SNPs which were very significant and these were all related to neurodegenerative pathway which supports the 
current uh, theory that it is not only a vascular disease, there is a neurodegenerative process which goes on. We followed these patients who were in urban uh, arm and we followed them for four years and we reported the four-year incidence of diabetic retinopathy. So those who didn't have any diabetic retinopathy at baseline, after four years, about 9% of them developed some form of retinopathy. S incidence seems to be less, but people who already had diabetic retinopathy, like for diabetic macular edema, but they didn't have macular edema at baseline, nearly about 12% of them developed macular edema over a period of four years. And the same thing, if the diabetic retinopathy is present and they didn't have sight-threatening retinopathy, sight-threatening retinopathy is severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, proliferative and diabetic macular edema, any one of them. Nearly 23%, 22.6% of them developed STDR, the sight-threatening retinopathy, in four years. We also looked into the progression, one-step progression, Overall, nearly 30% had a one-step progression. Two-step progression, about 12%. We also looked, which we know, the regression of retinopathy. Moderate non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is a stage which is reversible. Beyond that, diabetic retinopathy becomes irreversible. So at moderate NPDR, nearly 12% of them, they had some form of regression over a period of four years. We also looked into rural area, a large sample of nearly about 12,000 uh, population more than 40 years in rural areas and we had a specialized van so that the whole epidemiology study, the ETDRS chart, the seven field photography, everything was done in a van. They had a semi-automated lab where all the lab tests were done, ultrasound, whatever was done in the urban area was repeated in the rural. And we did find that prevalence of type 2 diabetes is about 10 percent, prevalence of retinopathy is also 10.3 percent. It's nearly half of what is seen in the urban areas. Rajiv, can come. Ah, fine. Difference between Asian and global is that like we get diabetes at an earlier age group as compared to the others. We have low body mass index. This was a meta-analysis of 35 studies, including India. I'll just skip some of them. There are a lot of initiatives, just last two, three slides. So. Government of India has provided grant in aid where they reimburse for laser and surgery. The initiatives by World Diabetes Federation, nearly about 25 projects in the country. Queen Elizabeth Trust, which has recently started combining with government, taking it to rural areas. AIOS did series of CME programs throughout the country. And some of our initiatives, we did initially a screening program, the prevalence, the incident study, the rural prevalence. We did nearly about 55,000 screening in Karnataka by telescreening. We compared the various ways, and now with Google, we are working on the automated diabetic retinopathy grading, and now we have started another specific diabetic retinopathy skill transfer program, two months training program. <coughs> so in nutshell, the, my role was to introduce the subject and tell that it is an epidemic, and I'm sure I could convince all of you diabetes and diabetic retinopathy both are increasing in global, in epidemic proportion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajiv.